If I could encourage everyone to take their seats, we'll, we'll get started. Hello, I'm Robert Greenhill. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There we go. With a partnership in the microphone now established, we can start this conversation. Uh, I'm, I'm Robert Greenhill, Managing Director of the Forum. And I'm extremely pleased to uh, be part of this conversation over the next hour and a half on an incredibly important but often amorphous uh, topic, that whole question of partnership and innovative partnerships for development. And uh, one can debate a long time what does development mean, but one can also debate for a long time what does partnership mean. And partnership is one of those elements like love or democracy which are critically, incredibly important, often difficult to define and even more difficult to execute and maintain over time. And it's essential to us uh, working together effectively. So I'm delighted to have uh, with us here today an extraordinary mix of people who, through their institutions and their individual work, demonstrate the concept of partnership in action. And so um, I would like to um, encourage you to engage with us in this conversation on how do we take partnership from words to actions to results. And uh, to start, uh, it's my great pleasure to turn the microphone over to President Kikwete, uh, who is a great example of partnership in so many different ways. Sir, the floor is yours. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Chair. Um, well, we are, we are here to discuss innovative partnership for development, partnerships for development. Let me start off by saying that um, partnerships are both desirable and necessary for development, both at national level, or at national, regional, and, and, and global level. If, if I can take the case of Tanzania, let me take the case of agriculture where we are 80% of the people live in rural areas and they depend on agriculture as the mainstay. But it is, it is a sector that is characterized by very low levels of productivity. As such, the peasants are subsistent. There is food insecurity amongst themselves, but also there is poverty that is widespread among, um, among the farmers. So developing our agriculture has been one of our main preoccupation from, from independence with our first president, President Yerele, he undertook a number of initiatives in order to kickstart agriculture. So among the things that we recently decided to do was bring in partnership. Of course, we have the traditional partnership between the government and our development partners. But later we discovered we, we need to bring in partnership with the private sector. We have, we have, a, we have a, a, in the country what we call the Tanzania National Business Council. It's a forum where the private sector and the government meets regularly. We discuss issues of mutual interest. We discuss challenges. We look forward at a number of visions. And three years ago, in one of the discussions, we, we discussed agriculture. We discovered that there are a number of problems in agriculture. And we need to involve the private sector in order to unlock some of the constraints that are, are facing our agricultural sector. We formed a joint committee to look into the issues and agree what we can do together. 
we came up with a strategy. We gave a famous name to this, or phrase to this strategy in Kiswahili, Kirimo Kwanza, the local language, but in the English translation, we said it, it means agriculture first. So all of us in government and the, and, and the private sector agreed that agriculture should be first. So we brought in partnership of involving the, the private sector now in what we're actually doing, specifically asking them to be part of the part of the production, agricultural production, if they want to get involved in, but also to be part of, uh, part of producing for agriculture in terms of providing the basic inputs, fertilizers, seeds, and so on, but also to be part of a process of buying from agriculture, getting involved in the agribusiness, in the, in the agricultural value chain. Well, after two years at the, at the last World Economic Forum in Dar es Salaam, we had a special session on agriculture. It was one of my wishes to Professor Klaus that the World Economic Forum on Africa, we should give agriculture more attention. We had a sideline meeting a few like-minded people from governments, international organizations, the international private sector. There again, we agreed on a partnership. So we brought that partnership now from the local level to the international level by bringing in international business to be part of us. We formed a joint committee to look at the partnership. And in the discussions we agreed, in terms of rules of engagement, we're going to get involved together, work together. But how do we work together? Let's, let's be focused. And we agreed that we're going to be focused to look at the Southern Agricultural Growth Corridor. This is, this is the breadbasket of Tanzania. We get the bulk of our corn or maize from there. A lot of rice comes from there. Uh, potatoes come from there. Beans come from there. So almost when it comes to food, this is the, the place. So we said we bring in the partnership of Tanzania, international local business, international business, development partners, Foundations, where the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Agra as an important part of that. So we, 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 we brought international agencies like the USID. Then jointly we sat down and say, how do we do it? We formed an executive committee with membership from the government, from the Tanzanian business community, from, our, from, the, from the international business, from development partners, from agencies like USAID, NORAD. Now we have developed, we came up with an investment blueprint which we launched at, 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 at the Davos World Economic Forum meeting. It's a 20-year program. 3.4 billion investments will be made. Annual returns from these going to 1.3 billion. 420,000 people will be employed. 2.3 million people will be lifted out of poverty. There is going to be a lot of food to be produced, far more than what Tanzania needs. This breadbasket of Tanzania now can become the breadbasket of the region. It can also become the breadbasket of other, 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 other countries beyond, beyond our region. So this, this is one example of a partnership, which is, which is an already ongoing.
It's already started. We, 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 we are now at the implementation phase. But another partnership with AGRA. The boss is here. <laughs> Agra again is, a, is another partnership. There is Bill and Melinda Gates in there. Our very illustrious brother is, is chairing that initiative. It's Ford Foundation, financial institutions are also there. USAID is part of that. Again, it is working with us. What, they, what have they been doing? Supporting smallholder farmers. Extending, supporting them with the inputs, seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides. But the good thing also with this initiative, it's just like the, 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 the other big initiative we are, we are doing for the whole corridor, there is already a market. Mm -hmm. What the farmers are producing has an assured market and there is a good price for his or her produce. <clears throat> so I'm saying th th these are innovative ways. Is there inno 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 innovative, innovative, inno innovative partnerships that, that we, we, we have created in order to address one particular problem that we're facing of trying to transform and, uh, the Tanzanian agriculture that is producing, that is backward, low productivity, predominantly subsistent, less assurance of food security, and therefore widespread poverty. So this, these two initiatives, we can definitely move forward and achieve our objectives. So I can, that's why I started by saying that partnerships are desirable, partnerships are necessary, and they have worked well for Tanzania. I can mention so many other partnerships in so many other fields, but for, 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 for the sake of time, let me mention this particular partnership in agriculture with reference to the Southern Agricultural Development Corridor Circuit and our partnership with AGRA. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. And Secretary General Kofi Annan, in, in your role as Secretary General and now in your role as, as a leader on so many different initiatives of which AGRA is, is one example. You've had a chance to experience both what works and doesn't work in partnerships. And what's your sense now about the innovative elements of partnerships here today? Thank you very much, uh, Robert. I think the president has already given us a sense of how useful, how useful um, partnerships could be and this potential to help with transformation in, in certain areas. He's given the example of agriculture where we in, uh, uh, in AGRA, Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, are working very closely with governments like his and the farmers on, on the ground. And um, the founding members of the alliance were the Gates and uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Rockefeller Foundation, and we have been able to get other governments, other institutions to cooperate and to work uh, with us. And I think when you look back where we started a few years ago and the progress that we've made, I'll give you an example in Tanzania. When we were there beginning of April, we went to the field and visited farmers and went to the research station. To our surprise, the leader of the, of the research center was a young PhD graduate who had just trained here in South Africa and returned. And he, was, he, he replaced an elderly gentleman who had just retired. And they had worked so effectively that in the area of maize, they were moving production from two tons per hectare <coughs> to between eight and nine tons per hectare using conventional uh, breeding. And to see the enthusiasm and the energy and the uh, interest of not just the scientists, but the people around, the farmers, with what they had done was quite uh, uh, remarkable. 
what this partnership has done, not just for Tanzania, but for other countries, is also accelerated change and reform. There were several countries, including Tanzania and my own country, Ghana, where the governments control the foundation seed. And therefore, private breeders and others couldn't get into the business. And when we say African farmers are producing uh, per hectare terms, gosh, I think I'm going to have a problem here. Per hectare terms, uh, one third of the global uh, average is because they were using the wrong seeds. They were using seeds which are about 20 years old when other governments were continuing with research and improving the, the seeds all the time. So working with African scientists and training African scientists, I think we are going to be able to do the same thing. And luckily, the governments have decided to open up. And you've released your foundation seats, uh, and the Ghana and others are doing that, opening up the industry for others to come in, understanding that you can allow others in. What you need to do is to have standards and certification to make sure they meet the standards and they are doing uh, the, the right uh, things. And the president is absolutely right. Our vision is not just to help the smallholder farmers and their families to feed themselves. Yes, we, you start there to help them to feed themselves, but also let them see their farms as a commercial uh, business to produce mm -hmm. for themselves and for the market. And uh, hopefully in time, Africa will become part of the global food security system. It's not a pipe dream. I think it, it can uh, be achieved. The other area where we've tried to make a difference is access uh, of financing to farm, uh, farmers. You know, we have a, a, a system where, for example, in Kenya, putting down a guarantee of $5 million, we leverage it $50 million to $50 million with Equity Bank to use it to provide seeds and fertilizers to farmers. We are working on similar arrangements, and there's even a bigger one that we've worked out with Nigeria, where uh, my good friend here, Strive, who is a member of the board, will explain to you, which will lead to substantial investment uh, into uh, agriculture. And of course, we are also encouraging agribusiness to get involved all along the chain in, in processing, storage, and marketing so that the farmers can, will be able to sell what they produce. And let me hasten to stress that we, we, we are focused on small-scale farmers, but it doesn't mean that we are opposed to commercial farms. It depends on how it is uh, organized, how it links up with the small-scale farmers because a good and responsible commercial firm among the farmers can be a really good asset. They can share technology, they can help provide ready markets, and everybody uh, gains. And of course, where I disagree is those situations where governments come in, lease or buy large tracts of African land to produce for their markets without thinking of the food security needs of the country. In my judgment, any attempt to take large track of lands to provide for foreign markets without considering the local requirements is not a viable model. Because if tomorrow there is a, a drought or shortage, do you really think the people are going to stand by with their arms crossed while you ship the food to your markets? It's not going to happen. So we should start on a very realistic basis to deal with the local food situation. And of course, we are looking at uh, things like uh, the, the, the foreigners are looking at wheat and all this, but there's also a staple food market. The staple food market in Africa is $150 billion. That also needs attention. We need to get involved in that. We need to handle that uh, uh, effectively. What the president has said and what I have said has really indicated that for the first time, perhaps, in many decades, we are seeing a real transformation of African agriculture. And if we sustain the effort, 
we can make it. And the partnership with the private sector, with civil society organizations, with foundations, is really making a difference. Uh, we expect to train many scientists who would really lead the charge. But they also know that they need to work with the farmers and that the farmers uh, have to be their main concern. Whatever they come up with, they have to get it to the farmer, as Borlaug used to say. And I have been quite impressed with this exchange between the scientists and farmers. We did a field trip, I think Strive was with me, in Mali, where talking to so-called illiterate farmers to talk about their agriculture and to discover that these farmers were factoring in climate change into their production and selection of seeds. When we ask a, a young farmer, why would you take this seed and not that one, said so the period of maturity is short and I can harvest before the rains cease because the rains do not come as long as it used to. It's not what my father or grandfather told me, so I have to adapt. Why would you select this or the seed? Or oh, the yield is higher, and it's better for me, and also it can resist uh, drought. It grows well in dry areas, or it's been able to resist uh, pest. And, and it was fascinating for us, and so the farmers are ready. It is us to help them move forward with innovative ideas and partnerships and get them going. But you can have this sort of partnerships in many areas, but to have effective partnership, the person in charge of the country, that is a leader and the government, has to take certain basic decisions. Yeah. What should we as a government do? What should we not do? What should we do with others? And what should we leave others to do? In my judgment, governments have no business producing soap and running businesses of that kind. You should leave the private sector to do it. In some of the services, social and health services, there are civil society organizations that are very effective and sometimes can do it better than the government. The government cannot do everything, so that mindset of government doing everything and controlling the situation has to change. But as we heard from the president, they, these governments 